I dream of a world where we don't do the same mistake twice. So how do we do that? Well, I envision a world where we use all the data um, that is out there and use this data in a good way. Um, use this data to learn, to learn about our mistakes and make sure that we don't do these mistakes twice. So where do we stand today? Right? So how do we do um, regarding this dream? Are we already there? I brought some examples with me. And um, the first example is very familiar with everyone. Um, that's concerning traffic jam. Right? So um, everyone here in the room probably already together, we all together spend millions of hours sitting in traffic jam. And, and even myself, I, I just recently missed a flight actually sitting in traffic jam because it took me three hours longer than actually planned to reach the, reach the airport. Um, but already these days, um, governments are using data that is collected from sensors, collected from phone locations, collected from app data, um, actually to compute um, in a very, very efficient way across all the roads we have. Um, we, they compute already um, the, the real-time speeds of traffic and learn from that how to, how to steer traffic, how to moderate traffic, how to reduce the traffic jams in a country. So we are, I think we are on our way not to make these mistakes, these millions of hours again and again. And we're using data for that. Second example, um, this is Singapore. If um, I'm visiting our office in Singapore and I'm sitting there in a taxi and I talk to the taxi driver, the taxi driver usually has one single topic and the, the, his topic is, oh my God, the city is growing like crazy. The public transport is jammed, too many people, and it's just, just a, a hassle to, to go around, to go from A to B. But also here, already, um, the city of Singapore is um, leveraging um, lots of different data sources from all over the, the, the city, also from, from citizens, um, to plan the city better, to understand how do people commute, how to improve the locations of bus stations, of subway stations. So already also here, we are um, doing quite okay, right, if you look at um, this idea of not doing the mistake twice, um, of, of living in a data-driven world. Unfortunately, it's not so easy. And um, there are not only clouds on the horizon, we are in the middle of a storm at the moment um, about the usage of data. And um, just to make this very tangible, I brought also an example with me. Um, and you will see very quickly why, why there is a fundamental tension here in the usage of data. Um, we have here a big, big um, group of protesters. and the exact same kind of analysis, the exact same, same kind of algorithms I just um, mentioned earlier, for, used for traffic and, and, and city planning, um, th these exact same data sources can be used to trace the movement and location of protesters. And um, this, is already, this is, of course, not how I envision a data-driven world, how I envision um, a world where we don't make the same mistake twice. And the issue here is even now, if you say, okay, this, this seems to be manageable. You have some rules to say, okay, probably traffic jam detection is fine, tracing protests is probably not, not fine. The issue is that if you go to different cultural backgrounds, and also me, um, for example, having, having an office um, in Singapore with people coming from, from the Asian background, if I talk with them about the usage of data, and especially this, also this use case of, of um, the, the tracing and protesters, Actually, from their perspective, they asked me, like, George, what's your, what's your issue? What's, what's your problem? Like, tracing like, groups of people anonymously aggregated shouldn't be an issue, right? And me, me as a German, um, we are, I mean, we Germans are crazy about data privacy. I'm saying, oh my God, this, is, this shouldn't be allowed, right? This, is, this shouldn't, shouldn't be possible. And so, even here, you see another challenge on, on designing a world where we use data to the maximum extent but still striking a balance between um, usefulness and, and privacy. Let's zoom out a bit, right? So we, we saw these now very tangible examples, and let's zoom out a bit and, and look where do we stand in, how's, what's the state of, of today's data economy? Um, how do we use data um, these days? And one thing is clear, we are at the moment in, in the Wild West. We have all these apps, we have all these websites, we have all these devices trying to capture some piece of our personal data, some piece of our 
movement of our identity, of, of what, we, what articles we read, what ads we look at. And this is, this is just growing extremely fast and uncontrolled beyond the supervision of any entity, any, any government entity, for example. We have all, as I mentioned, all these players like Google, like Facebook, who, who try to, to fish for our data and build the perfect profiles about ourselves. So it seems data is already being used. Maybe we need to improve this a bit, like uh, move over from Wild West to a bit more structured approach, but data is already me being used. But on the flip side, actually, in some extents, we are still in the stone age regarding the usage of data. Think about all these big companies out there in the world, all the banks, all the healthcare providers, insurances, all these companies who have very, very interesting data locked away from the public in their data centers. All this data could be so useful for us to design our world in a better way. But these are locked away, because th and for a good reason, right? They're locked away because this data is so sensitive, right? This data is so sensitive about, about us, and we can't just disclose that to the, to the public and have some, some um, interesting startups play with this data and come up with some interesting use cases to work towards this vision of not making the same mistake twice. So it seems we have a fundamental tensions. We have actually three tensions I mentioned here, right? So first of all, it's very, very hard to say what use cases should be allowed and, and which not. The second tension we have is that there's, there's some wild growth of usage of data, but on the flip side, we don't use the data we have to the maximum extent. And so what do we do? Basically, the technology innovation was moving much, much faster than any legal frameworks out there in the world. And governments haven't been able to um, keep up with the pace. Um, governments raised their hand and, and started complaining about like, the big players. But while they uh, focus on the big players like Google, they miss that at the same time, lots of other smaller players um, are, are already creating a reality which is far beyond the legal frameworks. And uh, I fear the risk of a public backlash where the public says, this data is being used to an extent I never intended and wanted to. Let's block and, and, and forbid all the ways we use the data, which would be very tragic, because again, my vision is that we don't do the same mistake twice, that we actually use data in a good way. And so, in order to solve this dilemma, we need to have stronger regulation. This is already a bit crazy, being, being a young company, saying we need, we need to have stronger regulation, um, ensuring that, that there, there is a way how, this, how the usage of, usage of the data is regulated. The second crazy idea I have is that actually every single one here in this room and, and here in the world who is contributing, for example, to this traffic speed analysis I mentioned in the beginning, right? Every single person should be participating in this value chain and should actually get something back. You should, for the fact that you're contributing your location data for traffic jam detection, you should get a few cents back um, for the fact that you're doing that, right? And because at the moment you, you don't see anything for that. How do we bridge this gap of, of having well-regulated institutions at the same time having you also participate in this data economy as, as getting something, something out of it? How do, you, how do you fuse that? And the proposal I bring here um, today is the concept of a data bank. A data bank which are regulated companies, institutions, which are allowed to have and store the most sensitive data that is out there about us, right? about, about us people, but being under clear government supervision. And these entities basically hold all the data of, of ours and keep it for us. And for the fact that we give our data into these data banks, we earn some interest back. Right? We earn some, a little bit back to the, for the fact that we store our sensitive data in there. You see, we trust our most, one of the most sensitive assets we have, our money, we trust the banks. We will trust our most sensitive, second most sensitive asset we have, um, our personal data, we trust the data banks. And the data banks ensure that then this data is lent to businesses, to governments out there to put it to, to good use, right? And um, use this data for, for a world we, where we don't make the same um, mistake twice. And where we, as the, the original um, data owners, as we as, as people providing our data, we earn some. And to also achieve one second thing, which is having the people who analyze the data th start to think twice whether they have to run a certain analysis or not. 
Um, if they know they have to pay a little bit of interest back to the original data owner, they will start to think twice whether they run this kind of, kind of analysis now or, or not. So coming back to the original um, vision, let's not make the same mistake twice. It's important that we, that we act soon. We um, don't want to have a, I don't want to have a um, public backlash which basically shuts the door to the effective usage of data for a better, for a data-driven world. Um, if we act soon, if we, if we um, impose proper legal frameworks to operate in, to, to have companies use that data to the maximum extent, I see a bright future, and I, I see a bright future where we don't do the same mistake twice. Thank you. Thank you.